Is it ready? Okay. Oh, I guess we're. Are we doing this? All right. We're. I guess we're. We're we doing. We might as well. Oh, might as well. Let's do that. Lock the gates. Are we doing this? Mendel yeah. is in charge of the music tonight. Okay. And the, and the intro too. Oh, I'm, I'm doing the intro too. We have to. Welcome it's to Everyone Racers, a podcast for the world of low dollar <laughs> racing and scrolling up on your word document. It doesn't matter what kind of LeChamp or track dog you run, SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate. Why, we even think you drift to hell of flush, folks are all right, as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes from the world of amateur racing. And if you're lucky, and you're not lucky this week, folks, sorry, Chrissy oh, might give, give it away. a tip. Everyone, report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And, hey, we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for coming back and listening to another highly... Co- what is that a word? I, I don't know okay, what that word is. Co- to, uh, it, it's co- quotient. Co- to- quotient, which is a mathematical no. phrase, and the number 47 is a quotient number. It's not quotient. It's like quotient, no, but no. it's co- 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 quotient. Co- hey, thanks for listening to another highly quotient episode of our podcast. Welcome to episode Because every all of our listeners know what that means. Actually, exactly. well, they do now. <laughs> this is everyone vocabulary. Thanks. <laughs> it's getting that way. And to increase your lexicographical knowledge, we're going to ask Mental what he's working on first. So this weekend went down to the Mardi Gras region of Porsche Club of America and the NOLA region of NASA, which is a highly uh, intertwined organization because it's all about NOLA. And we had an instructor clinic to certify instructors. Now they're PCA and, and Chris, as you well know, NASA has a pretty high standard for their instructors. And NOLA takes it very seriously. So it was actually fun because we got to go down there and be every bad student I've ever had in an HBDE. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, He's yeah. done that multiple times. Instructor clinic. I, was, yeah. I had to be the guy who was like overcooking every corner and just dive bombing and being crazy. And I was in the Mercedes, so I was just drifting around corners. And I said to the guy, <laughs> I said to my other co-student, I said, like, I can only do this for like two laps. And then I have to stop. So. <laughs> And it's something I, I, I noticed is the first couple of laps I was out there, it's it's hard to unconsciously drive bad after you've been trying to win for so long. So I actually like had to go, oh, that's right. I don't want to turn here. I want to turn way before this and kind of screw this up a little bit. And uh, my, early on, my, uh, my instructor student, he was just having a hard time. And I just said, OK, stop, get two turns ahead of the car, start talking. And for the rest of the time he was out there, he did a great job. And then he had his evaluation. They said he did fantastic. But, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun. And then I had to give an evaluation. And I, I may have gone off the rails a little bit. But uh, my, my, uh, my evaluatee did a really good job of trying to calm me down. <laughs> and this um, – actually, it's not this coming weekend. I mistyped. Uh, this will be next weekend I'm doing Drive Strong at AMP this weekend – uh, while you guys are going to be in questionable states of sobriety after the track goes cold, I'm going to the Hong Nor 40th birthday party this weekend. So oh. I, I will probably oh, come back. That's fun. 20 IQ 40th. Is oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, you, you are going to be in a, in a far worse questionable state of sobriety than we are. No, no matter how <laughs> drunk we are, you will be worse. Worse, yeah. and probably in a little bit more danger because they're you know they're up in nowhere Jasper Georgia <laughs> with a uh, big plot of land and a lot of uh, you know fireworks and oh, gasoline. <laughs> something is going to be set on fire, no doubt. <laughs> oh, okay. Just one thing, uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, okay, many things probably. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no party like a Hong Nor party, that's for sure. So. Nope. <laughs> cool. All right. Chris, what you got? Who's um, next? Yeah, Nothing. this week I've been I've been getting ready for a race. Like we got the car ready, car runs, but I also had to still had to put on the bumper, um, get that in. I re-engineered the side skirts. They are all actually now on quick release Zeus fasteners. Yay! And they have a aluminum angle iron on the back side of them, so they are no longer floppy. Uh, but the nice thing is just five quick release fasteners. The side skirt comes right off, so we can actually get to the jacking points. That was the big problem um, because is, it was. This is helpful to those. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, it was basically impossible to jack the car up without cutting your arms up. Like, you couldn't get to any jacking points. So that was a design flaw. Now we have fixed that. So that's good. And honestly, very few people like floppy sides. 
Mm-mm, not at all. No, it was more of the um, trying to shove your arms quickly to put the jack blocks on the jack be so we could jack the car up. And somebody would have to pull with all of their might to pull the side skirts out. And somebody would have to shove their arms in. I was the arm shover. It was always behind the side skirts, like way behind. Not at the edge, like way behind. So anyway, now, now there are quick releases. It's much easier. So that's good. Fantastic. So you're saying, to say, Chrissy, it's just the tip wasn't cutting it. No. Mm, no, no, no. It was elbow <laughs> deep. Elbow deep, my friend. So um, we came also... home with bruises and cuts and... Mm. I don't know what was in there. So we had to pack the trailer and get everything else in. So we cleaned the trailer very nicely. I got a pressure washer. I borrowed it from my neighbor and pressure washed all the mud off the floor of the trailer because the previous owner used it to haul the side by side. So this is a, it, it's much nicer in the trailer now, which is great. I fixed the shelves that were a little, little wonky. And the best part is we got a new rolly workbench for the trailer. So we went to... I was looking at Lowe's and Home Depot and Harbor Freight because I wanted a like a three foot tall by about four foot wide uh, tool chest that was on casters. So we got one. We ended up getting one in clearance at Lowe's. It was the lightest weight one because I got to haul this damn thing around. It only has five drawers. I said I would like would liked more, but considering we only use it a couple times a year, and I don't want to be hauling an extra couple hundred pounds around just for nothing. Yes, I'm Chrissy. sorry, you need to give me some credit on this, please. <laughs> Chrissy, was, Chrissy pushed me to this is the right one. I was torn. He's like, but I want 11 drawers. And I'm like, this one's on clearance. It's fine. It has five drawers. We'll make it work. You use it five times a year. Yeah. Go. And she was right because Thank she usually you. is. And so anyway, the point, so now that is fully loaded with all of the tools we bring. Most of the fluids, most of like all the electrical stuff. So all the stuff I used to bring in those separate crates of stuff. Plus, right. everything that was in the toolbox is now all in this rolly cabinet. And I even mounted a surge strip to the side of it. So we can just plug it in and then we have outlets. So, the, and, so loading the uh, bourbon is going to take half the time now. Right. It was so, and lower loading the trailer. So now the other part is when we get to the track, I just wheel this thing out and wheel it right into our garage spot. And we have all that stuff right there. Yes, Jeff. You have built, uh, how long have you had the trailer? Uh, eight weeks. Uh, eight weeks no we bought it like two months ago yeah two months ago eight weeks so i bought mine like what two years ago and i still <laughs> haven't built the exact same thing i have all the components you have, you have three crates that are full i didn't build I have, anything i went to lowe's and i bought a toolbox I, and I, put I know it in the trailer. i have a toolbox it might be I cheaper the than casters i i just i haven't done dinkus it, you've done a lot of other things that's yeah. true How's so anyway true? We're ready yeah, now, so when we get to Thompson, we're I'm not just even gonna, asking that. Once the car's out, we're just gonna roll the toolbox out right into the garage spot, and there's all the tools, there's all the supplies, all the fluids. And there's a workbench. It's a workbench. All in one. Woo! Nice. You guys need to find out now, like how to do that for the hot tub. So, like the hot tub just rolls out of the trailer, and you hit a switch. Yeah, that's the hard uh, part. Yeah. Like when the hot tub's full, it weighs about two thousand pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it's a, it's a little. Bench. It's a little hard to transport an open vessel of water down don't, the highway. <laughs> don't give me excuses. Give me solutions. Well, it won't be an open vessel of water for long. That's <laughs> true. Doing that. true. Um, I also helped Cricky with Chrissy with cooking. We made 19 wart burgers and a variety of other things. And oh, the, oh yeah. I'm missing wart burgers. So Aaron's got enough food, but what about the rest of us? Right. That's true. That's okay. But I'm Ching. Right. And then we, he'd say, true. screw you. But you're right. <laughs> So, You're right. Um, then we went to the beach one day, and tonight I was doing a work event. Was it where closed? We, no, it was no, it was open. Time. We got there in time. <laughs> it was a work event where I was I, I was the grill master, where we were there. For, we were at a uh, rescue mission in Redding, Pennsylvania, and we fed uh, like 120 people. So I was just manning the grill, cooking out burgers and dogs, and that's why I just took a shower, mental that you asked earlier. Because <laughs> I was outside in 95 degree heat. At a grill that was blowing in my face, so I smelled terrible. Or if you were yeah, near my dogs, you smelled wonderful. Oh, true. true. So that's what I've been working on. Jeff, what about you? So uh, it's been hotter than halfway up a snake's ass in a wagon rut here in New Jersey, <laughs> which I'm sure isn't that <laughs> different than where you guys are. Things? Well, that was his uh, quote from Thompson from... a couple years ago. Yeah, exactly. It's my quote from Thompson, which I stole from uh, from Good Morning Vietnam. So um, I didn't do dinkus, but laundry last weekend. I literally sat in my house going, you know what? I should fix a lawnmower. Mm-hmm. Got to play on my iPad for another hour wow. until the sun goes down. That That's didn't impressive. Happen. Yeah. I'm impressed. So I did nothing. But what, still, my, 
No. <laughs> <laughs> zombie. Shooting zombie games. Um, An hour's worth of shooting zombie games? Uh, yeah. It, it can go away pretty quickly. So when how's you're that completely... Citroen paperwork doing? <laughs> yeah, no, it didn't anyway. So, oh, come on. <laughs> Good one. I, I did receive some important paperwork for the state. I'll add that. I've already burnt the pod, so you guys know this. From the state of Massachusetts, my license to perform weddings. Hey, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was like, that has nothing to do with the Citroën. What? That's what? old. That's old news. So, um, I do want to say that still, it's my father news, managed. Though. It is important news. So my uh, wife and son went away to Chicago for the week. So I had all kinds of plans to do stuff each night this week. And each night this week, my father called me and had a job to do. Chrissy, you had a question? Uh, What's in Chicago? Uh, My aunt. My my wife's aunt. Okay, great. So yeah, sorry. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So they're out there having a good time, uh, taking a little break. And I was like, I'm going to do everything. Every night at six o'clock, <laughs> ring, ring for my father. Hey, can you come over the house and do this for me? Hey, can you come over the house and do this for me? So I had to move the quarter million mile WRX that darkens his driveway <laughs> because <laughs> he is getting a gravel parking pad for the three pedal mafia official RV oh. to live in his side yard. Oh, oh very exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, sh- Long story short, I drove the tow pig over to yank it because although we have promised this to Aaron, it has been sitting for a very long time. Yes, hamburger Aaron. Uh, <laughs> or burger Aaron. It's not a Aaron. normal ham- Sorry, hamburger. Sorry, not a hamburger. Uh, so anyway, so I drove the tow pig over. I yanked it with a chain up the angled driveway. I pushed it back, yanked it again, pushed it back, yanked it again, pushed it back. Had some lovely dinner and conversation with my parents. Went home. And my father sent me a picture of the giant puddles of oil that I left <laughs> in his driveway. Uh, wait, from the tow the av- pig peed the avalanche peed some sort of hydraulic fluid all over the place from right out oh. the front of the motor near the radiator kind of location. I haven't even looked because I was just too pissed about it. I mean, no. Yes. So Jeff, can I have the avalanche? No. no. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're, we're going to talk about that in a minute. So I just want to mention that was Monday. Today's Wednesday. On Tuesday, I was like, okay, now I can get stuff done. And my father calls me and he's like, uh, can you take the race tires off the Miata and give me real tires? I like to drive this thing in the rain and stuff and night. And st-. So pulled it over and had to change the tires here. Uh, I don't know why he wants to drive that Yankee, janky piece of crap anytime. Because it's, there it's it is. not Yankee. as janky anymore. It's, it's not, not as janky, janky anymore. It's true. Right. It Actually, is. No, I like that phrase. It's, it's, it's y- yanky. Yankee, Yankee, which is janky up north. Yes, exactly. Frank, not Frankie, north enough for a Frankie is if it's redneck and janky. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So yeah, so I, I'm I'm troubled with the, you know, a question a. Does it? <laughs> my brother and a teenage son live in the house with my father, and why do I have to come over? And push cars around and take off tires. They are both completely capable. And you are the second the one, one is. What was second? You are the useful one. I was going to say no one. comment because Jim may actually listen to this podcast. Say, <laughs> Jim, Jim oh no! Your house when he needs tires done? Are you? Uh, sure? yes, he, he does. does. True. Right. true. true. <laughs> Jim is so, a smart um, man. I didn't yeah, say exactly. he wasn't smart. Just... Oh not no, the, Jim's got Jeff's it figured not out. Not the smart one. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, the sweaty, dirty one versus the smart one. You're so, right. um, yeah, so then that was question one. And then question two, has the avalanche become just like a giant pile of pancakes you order at a restaurant? It seems like a good idea at the time. <laughs> Ten minutes when, in, you're when, fucking when sick you're, of it. When you're <laughs> drinking, it seems like a good idea. That's a great one. I like it. But halfway through, you're just sick of it. So, um <laughs> I I refuse to even look at it. Uh, I will wait until next weekend after the race, and I will make a decision. It may never darken my driveway again. It's probably a oil or trans cooler or power steering cooler line because they all run up in the front there, and all of them are susceptible to rust because everything on your truck is super rusty. And mentally, yes. you cannot have his avalanche unless you're willing to pay fair market value for it, because that's he needs the money for a new truck. <laughs> and, 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 and to that end, and I, I I do like the line. I'm still in your line, Jeff, but I'm going to give you credit. I do like the line of, no, you can't have it because I'm going to trade it to some white belted clown at a used car lot. Um, it's when absolutely you figure true. out when you come up with a budget, 
let me look down here where it's uh, seriously where it's a lot less rusty and then or i can also look out my friends in oklahoma where it's even less rusty and because they're everywhere super duty trucks are hella cheap and let's see if we can get you something a little more useful and a little less rusty yeah so uh as always the internet beckons me so i have been doing some research and i i really think that chris's thought of the nissan titan might be the way to go yeah. um yeah, they're towing like 9,500 pounds. Yeah. Yep. you got to look the, for the they're... ones with the big tow mirrors. If it has the big mirrors with the two bars across, that means that then it's got the tow package. The, the big tow package, as they call it. And that's the 9,500 yeah. pounds with the different – the biggest thing is a different rear end ratio and stuff like that. Um, so you want the big mirrors means the big tow package. Yeah. So anyway, but that is not yet – it is not yet decided. So there it is, depressed – pissed off sweaty that's where i am right now you want you want a rust-free suburban <laughs> why are you selling it I no know. i like it what wait what <laughs> although if you're going to get rid of the avalanche i could put the big block in it and then i'd have the big block quadrasteer suburban which would be pretty cool holy well, crap i'll tell you what why does Chris get this? What, what about my <laughs> suburban who is who is more likely to get it done Oh, I will send you both a text before I accept the trade in value. There you go. All right. Perfect. Done. I think okay. the listeners actually heard that angry squint. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> News and notes time. Let's stop talking about my junky truck. Uh, Anybody Chrissy, got anything? Or Chris, go you first? like to ignore Chrissy, Jeff? Yeah. That's, Jeff, oh, that's Jeff's news and notes is I like to ignore Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I that's okay. I didn't do much. Um, no, that's not true. After Chris pressure washed the trailer, I pressure washed the house and the deck and everything. You know when you get on, like, if you have a pressure washer and you like to pressure wash, uh, there's there's such a satisfaction of, like, getting things clean. So then I just pressure washed everything. It was awesome. It's like a magic eraser. You it's just, a like, magic eraser. Dirt. So I just I I just pressure wash everything. Now we have to restain the deck. Nothing matches. <laughs> I, it's filthy and wet. And I was like, this is amazing. I got my safety glasses out because there was dirt in my eyes. No, you should. I, I pressure washed everything. It was. The, the neighbors were a little upset that they got woke up at two in the morning, but their house. Well, was- their well the back the backyard <laughs> the back people behind us have a new baby, so they probably weren't happy about me running the pressure washer all day. But I didn't care. I um, love, love that you said when you get carried. We we have a pressure washer. My dad gave us, and I was pressure washing the the our brick patio and i got maybe a quarter of the way into it and vicky comes out and she's kind of looking at it she goes can i try that and i'm like yeah sure no problem never touch the fresh washer again uh, uh, it's awesome <laughs> it's just our neighbors it's gotta, it's gotta be a good gas one though the electric ones aren't worth I know. A yeah. damn and if it doesn't kind of cough a little bit when you when you grab that trigger nah it, yeah, it's exactly. not moving enough water or it doesn't shoot you off of the ladder that you're standing on with your nice on. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Um, PPE okay. ain't going to help that. No. <laughs> no. <I> mean, <laughs> that should be my tagline at work. Uh, just kidding. So, <laughs> okay. Oh, that's, that phrase is getting used this weekend at Thompson or at, at either at Whitey's birthday party. Oh, yeah, PPE shoot. ain't going to help you with that. Well, uh-uh. hopefully my, my co You, can, you can wear a high visibility vest the whole time, Mental, if you <laughs> want, because <laughs> after a while it would be hilarious. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you can say, I am the stuff. safest one here, Mike. <laughs> Which I think I need to do anyway. So anyway, yeah. um, so I did some a lot of race prep, helped Chris uh, fill the and organize the new rolly bin. Uh, I packed a whole lot of stuff in the house. Our The truck is empty, so we're going to pack it all tomorrow. So everything is staged and ready in the den. And then uh, we also went to the beach on Sunday because I deserved a day off. Now, Jeff, you can go to News and Notes. Thanks. Sorry. I, I, I again jumped the gun. <laughs> There was news and notes a, time. I guess I'm the only soon. one with I'm the only one with an actual news that isn't like a uh, a race update. But uh, very excited, Radwood and Bradley Brownell has recently released a Philly date. I am so what? excited by this. Oh my god! It's like I, totally I, is this, for this year or next year? Uh, this year it is probably going to happen on October 14th. That is the Sunday before we leave for New Hampshire Motorsports. Cool. Uh, he has not announced a location or anything like that. 
Uh, for those of you who don't know, Radwood is an 80s and 90s car show and lifestyle event, I will say. Um, and it's the hottest car show on the planet right now. If you haven't heard of Radwood, you're, you shouldn't be listening to this podcast. Like them on Facebook and Instagram. So Can we bring totally a Citroen? Gotta, we totally oh, got to bring the, yes. the Civic. That has is to be awesome. There. I mean, no. how about Civic. a hot Citroen? Civic. Citroen. Citroen. 300CX. Yes. Miata. These are all. Uh, and, uh, NSX. Miata, uh, NSX. Well, is NSX is actually there. should be there. In a yeah. sex, the Citroen and the 300. You guys should totally rock up. Yeah, the Citroen okay. is not 80s or 90s. It's 70s. Yeah, it's Citroen is 70s. Like, it doesn't so. fit. still cool. It's I didn't still realize cool. Uh, we want somebody to buy it. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. But that's Probably the would. end of my news and notes. Let's move on. Yay. All Race right. Recaps. So, folks, the good folks over at American Endurance Racing had their inaugural out of the United States event at Calaboogie Motorsports. They ran a 9 plus 9. Only 14 entries. Big surprise. 10 BMWs. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> mm-hmm. One P car, one Miata, a Z, and then that 458 Challenge Ferrari. So they only ran three classes. And the uh, the number 512 race-wide Ferrari 458 Challenge took first both days in class five. Got them the overall. Class no four. Yeah. yeah. Surprise. Right. Class four was the uh, 955 Just for Fun Racing's 99 BMW M3. They also took fourth both first both days. Uh, but on that Ruben Performance Garage, they had a rough weekend because they got fourth and third in their 330, and then their 98 328 didn't start on Saturday and didn't finish on Sunday. Those guys are actually kind of having a rough season because they had one wadded up. They had one catch fire a couple of times, and they're great guys. So Ruben Performance Garage and Barbecue, stick with it, guys. I look forward to seeing you at Mid-Ohio. Class three, the don't panic, very race worn, very well driven spec E30 beat the raw motorsports E30, which didn't start both days. So basically it was a one car class. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great competitor. Um, do you, I, you know, I, I should know this answer. Um, where is this? It's in Canada, but how far away is it in Canada? Because we'll talk a little bit about Canadians later. Uh, do oh I shouldn't ask that because nobody. No, knows. you should. You should. And honestly, I should have totally uh, had it. Uh, uh, I believe it is in Ontario. Is in, it's in Ontario. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, I was just wondering how how far up it is, and if we just it's fourteen be fourteen. It's way far to get anybody to get up there, and it's. I was just wondering if it's. We're just not getting the people. They weren't getting the people that they expected because it's far. It they is the people. And everyone's getting tired of the AER arms race. Okay, that's fine, too. There, okay. there might have been some fallout from that one, yeah. Fine. Okay, let's move on to the uh, last weekend. We had the Champ Car at... V- oh, I'm sorry. This weekend? Is that this weekend? Yeah, it is this, this weekend. Champ, Coming up. Champ Car, uh, 20, full 24 hours at VIR. That sounds super exciting. 99 cars signed up. 35 BMWs. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's over a third of the field. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. 16 Miatas, 14 Honda Acuras, including an S2000. Four... All right, we're waiting on Chris. Chris is attempting no, something. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, four P cars and one Triumph TR6. Uh, I looked through this and I... <laughs> I thought I got nothing, but Chris found me some fun things. I, the Baltimore Rons are doing their, um, their uh, BMW uh, 318i, which is our favorite Carl. Carl. Hang on. Yay. As, re- as requested Carl. by Carl. Carl, you ready? Boring. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, so, good luck, Carl. We'd like to see you there. And uh, th- there's a team that's called the Cat Valier. <laughs> They're driving a Cavalier, and that's awesome. That's all I got. <laughs> Uh, some guys that stood out to me, uh, Crash Management uh, 232 and a 2001 Dodge Stratus. Oh, just, cloud car. Just God bless you for trying to keep one of those things running for 24 hours. Uh, yeah, uh, the other one is the R-Bank Racing, 90Racing.com, 9099 Saab 93. Those guys have been in uh, – been on the podium several times. They know a thing or two about keeping that old Saab 93 running. It's uglier than it should be, and it's faster than it has a right to be. And the last one that got my attention was Leviathan Motorsports, uh, number 255. They've got a 1991 Toyota MR2 V6 Longtail. I had to Google that car, and it's in the notes right there. And I'm looking at what they did for the arrow on the back of that V6 uh, MR2, yes. and I want to drive it. 
So Leviathan, <laughs> if, if you're if, if you're looking for a bad driver with a nice RV, you know, just give me a call. So that and uh, great that hair, great look, hair, yeah. great hair. Don't forget. <laughs> 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 Both of you said same time. <laughs> So someone picked these Civics for me to talk about. I don't really care. They're like '90s, late '90s Civics, boring. We next. Yes. Go, Jeff. That's boring. Uh, I, lower, Jeff. lower racing. I love this name and I love the car. A 2000 Chevy S10 Extreme, <laughs> spelled with an X. Slower and lower is how you describe uh, uh, low riders. And barely racing. Number 390 in their 1995. <laughs> Eagle Talon, baby. Oh, I can't wait to see how these guys do next year. They're barely racing because they're walking their crank. Exactly. Takes a while. <laughs> crank Good is walking them. around the track with them. Okay, let's get on to Lemons at Thompson this weekend. Uh, thank you to our number one er- uh, guest, Eric Rude, for the entry list. 120 cars. That's a lot. Yee. Okay. Yee. Yep. That's what oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 12 BMWs, 5 Miatas, 14 Honda and Acuras, 2.5 P cars. There's one list that is a 924-ish, and I okay. think it might be that Nissan-powered one that uh, Sasha built a couple of years ago. All right, and one glorious Alpha. Oh, I, is good. I, actually, Ooh. there's two Alphas. Sorry. What? Ooh. Oh, okay. I, I, I tried it. to correct that in the numbers. Yeah, there's a, there's a Spider and a Milano. Okay, okay. yeah, now it, Spider's cool, but it's 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 the Milano that we all let them pass because you want to hear it. Plus, yeah, that team sure. is the one that feeds the whole paddock with pasta on Saturday nights, and yeah. they're oh, super, they're we love those super guys. nice people. All the above, yeah. they and are. they're great. They're great racers too. Hi, Greg. Okay, so yeah. I was looking through this and I was saying I found a whole bunch of team names that I loved, which I guess I don't <laughs> look at the team names, but I had to go through these. <laughs> team Lazarus raced from the dead. Ball, yeah. All day rose. <laughs> May bombs. We That's M-E-H. Aud- M-E-H, yeah. <laughs> we Audi, Audi. We all Audi be faster. Well, we ought to be faster. <laughs> the Mazda, Mazda Roddy. And my favorite. My favorite. Ken, <laughs> my Ken, Ken, and non-Kens. Which we should totally do this with Chris. <laughs> that was I wrote that. We should, Chris, Chris, and the non chris Only when then, Mental's like, there with us, too. Then it's Chris, Chrissy, Chris, and not Chris. Yeah. And then I could I could I could bring my brother and hey I'm Chris this is my brother Chris my teammate Chris his wife Chris uh-huh. <laughs> so so I love how they they wrote it it was Ken comma Ken and the non Ken non Ken non Ken <laughs> oh man oh that's me I'm next so uh, our, our our boys the Lementarians who always crack us up and are. Oh, just awesome themers. They're bringing a 1996 Dodge Neon and their well-worn 1985 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome, which, which the last sounds time, awesome. Which the last time we saw it, it had a mock-up of a top fuel dragster. Some it was crazy. Yeah. Um, it's going to be wonderful to pass on the tight switch, the tight sweepers of Thompson. So, yeah, with 120 other cars. And, yeah. and I'm just going to say, like. We may be talking a lot about the teams here, but these are all of our friends because these are the people we've been racing with for a very <laughs> long time. FRS is Ugly Uncle and their Toyota Solara, Rust in the Wind and their Nissan 300ZX powered, Saab powered. They can probably win the race uh, straight out of Suncock, Cook, whatever. They are 608, their E36 Cheater Mobile with they absolutely no theme. They better have a damn theme this time. They better have a damn theme. <laughs> like if, they, if, they show up with a, great. if they show up with another Days of Thunder theme, I'm going to put them in the wall. Yeah. Uh, Futility Motorsports, Young Chris, and the rest of the family, the Egan family, will be there. <laughs> and the their best. wonderful 9.5 wagon, which I would daily drive in a heartbeat. But as, I wanted to mention. As it, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, uh, Chris is father. Bob, yeah, Chris, forever, forever. Bob, yeah, Bob Daly drove yeah, that for two hundred and sixty something thousand miles, and that's <laughs> <laughs> so. So a couple, uh, uh, and my boys hit them with the Hind Racing are still uh, out there flogging that nineteen ninety eight Ford Ranger that at New Jersey Motorsports lost the fuel tank and got drive hit and just and all kinds yeah, of stuff, yeah drive sh- whatever. Um, and then I found these. These guys are new. I think I'm not sure. Italian AF as Franco. A 1978 Fiat right. 131. Well, that'll last about four laps. Yeah. <laughs> but good for right. them. I mean, 
that it's that choice. builds character, yeah, right? Builds yeah. character. It builds character. Okay, so our friends, uh, Tar- far from win, uh, Tom Luino and his friends. Who knows? He, he has a couple of people driving with him for in his golf. He um, has a theme uh, finally. Uh, you know, I think yeah. he just puts some stripes on the car or something. I don't yeah, think it's I know. It's not a okay, theme. Okay, so this I don't even know what this is. The Hydro Cephalus Racing yes. Team is driving a 2002 Honda Odyssey. Do you, okay, can, go, Jeff. Can I explain what this is? Does oh. anyone know what hydrocephalus is? Jeff is I just so know excited. That, 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 that yeah. means, the last part means it's inflamed. It's it's water on the brain. Oh, and it's so a form of uh, uh, defect that causes mental retardation. Okay. And so, that's their team name, and they're driving a Honda Odyssey. So it's kind of like kids with ass cancer. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Got it. Anyway, okay, so great. Um, <laughs> this is an inside joke. is inappropriate. Anyway, so um, another team, Nuggets Deep, they're driving a Corrado. Ooh. Oh, here's the hot bet for the weekend. Which car is going to get more laps, the Fiat 131 or the Corrado? Uh, I don't know. Oh. Remember we is talked about that. All right. So, yeah. Who gets more? So as a 90, I, well, is, it, it uh, would be if it's stock. Yeah, but it depends but, on which motor. Which motor? Right, but Volkswagens or Legos, they could. Who knows what's in there? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna I, find out because I love Corrado. Totally doing that. I, I, and I then love. Find out he's running the staggered wheels too, Chris. I will. Oh, come yeah, on, I'll take a picture stagger. of it. Love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, old school, Chrissy. This is what it happens. Uh, Corrado. So, and uh, our friends at the Magic School Bus, which we love on their Super Forester. Yeah, Chris. And then there's this. Um, a team with a Civic, a 90 Civic called the Misfortune Cookie. That's fun. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I do too. They were the and... guys that were handing out the at Road Atlanta. And uh, there's oh, the, the, the picture oh, on yeah, okay. oh, yeah, the, yeah. the The amount of problems is directly correlated to the amount of things you've touched. Yeah, no, they were yeah. good. That's called the Civic. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's somehow these three, these Jokers, three Puddle Mafia have three cars in this race. A Civic, yeah. an RX-7, and a Cressida. Wait a minute. Where have I heard? Wait. Where have I heard that name before? It was some sort oh, of. It's because they are the national effing champions. Effing champions. Yes, 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 national yes. effing champions. Yeah, yes. good one. Um, the, hey, <sighs> eight, eighty. You want an eighties Japanese car? We got one. That's really well. <laughs> like, we, we could totally, as a future theme, do like the nineteen ninety Tokyo Auto Salon. Like we include the Z in that too. <laughs> We're there. You are the you are the raddest Radwood team that is racing lemons this weekend. It's true. Yeah. Our oldest car will be 1990 eventually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> From every Japanese manufacturer, too. Yeah. True. Yeah. Every major Mental. one. Do it. So, so it's, it, there's some great team names out there, and there are things in this world that are just funny. Who's on first? Always funny. Three Stooges? Always funny. Pie in the face? Always funny. And I'd like to point out that the 1990 Volvo GLE 760, a team number 96, which is Rectum, Spell Damn it. near killed him. Damn near killed him. Damn near killed him. W R E C K T U M. Wrecked him. Wrecked him. Damn near spell killed him. him. Damn near killed him. That's always These, fun. You have so many good, good of um, team names here. Go. Yeah. And then the other one, the uh, Eric Root posted this up on the Facebook or on the, the Instagram for 24 Hours of Lemons. But it's the, we like the tuna here, and it's a 1997 Chevy Monte Carlo, but. It identifies as a Toyota Supra, <laughs> and they have the ridiculous Aztec pointing God sticker on the side of it. It is hysterical. They've done the paint job, so good on them. My other one, going back to the inside jokes of lemons, Richie Rich from the wait list. They finally got in. Someone finally didn't pay their money, and they gave their slot to Richie Rich from the wait list. Of course, they're driving a BMW. If I'm not mistaken, Garage Heroes in training. Is that not our boy, uh, Bill? That's and Bill Fisher. You bet. That is Bill, yeah. Bill and Bill. Vicky and the, and the kids, and it's great. That is awesome. And I would Yay. be remiss if I did not drop a, a tip of the hat to, if they could keep it together, uh, guys that actually have had a chance of finishing top 10, the infamous sorry for party racing, but they probably won't. But they're It's, a it's not keep it together. They've kept it together. They just got to, like, get a smoky eunuch extra 10 gallons of gas on that thing. Yeah. And it That's could the win. Problem. It's the gas. Yeah. Blow up when it's not blow uppy. Do they have a hydro mat? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. They just have, yeah, that, they that have might a be big, trade secret they have a big here, V8 but... with a carburetor and it just sucks down the gas. Like they have a just big tank as we do, but they burn through it in two hours. 
So. Yeah. And, and they do not go light. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Now, yeah. do you know who else doesn't go weak? Extreme. Uh, I don't know. Tell oh. us, Mental. Tell me. <laughs> Because Extreme Experience puts you in the driver's seat of the world's best supercars at over 20 racetracks in America and Canada with no speed limits, no shifting restrictions, and no governors. Head over to xxspeed.com to choose your supercar, find a racetrack near you, and start making a story of your own, such as you could do over Veterans Day weekend at Atlanta Motorsports Park with me and my cadets and use that as a fundraiser for our what? organization. That's right. In okay. addition to being charitable, they have seven models of exotic cars and supercars to choose from. They have 20 plus tracks and a year round location in new Orleans, Louisiana with a 3,200 foot straightaway, which I got to sample this weekend. And it's still just as awesome as it always was. You get a pro instructor like Chris, Jeff, or myself in the car with you, helping you explore the car's limits and learn to drive the racing line. And right now, you can save 25% when you use the code Everyone Racers. That's all one word, Everyone Racers at XX Speed to book today. Extreme experience, it's your turn. I'd like to point out that we've done quite well with this, and while we've got some really cool stuff in the works we're going to be announcing here in the next few weeks, we are looking for any additional sponsors. So if you are interested, drop us a line at everyone.racers at gmail.com. Yeah, there it is. Like we'll move on to Chrissy's favorite section. Sure. Listener feedback. Listener feedback? I think I have the first one. Um, So uh, we recently got a five-star rating. Ooh. Whoop, whoop. Get a sticker. From I awesome. think he already has a sticker. This is the. Go ahead. Yeah, awesome fanboy Stan, Sam. Checks in the mail. Sam M, right? Yeah. So uh, he uh, wanted to chime in on the have you gotten sick in the car th- discussion. Uh, he says, hello, fellow racers. I'd like to chime in on getting sick in the car. I was at the champ chump race at TWS called at World's End, second driver. And before I got in the car, I brought a breakfast burrito from the little food (laughs) shack there i know where this is going already i noticed as i was eating it the bacon seemed a little chewy (laughs) oh this is not good never been motion sick in the car before i thought nothing of it well one hour into my cell into his stint he filled up his helmet it went down his baklava, which is tucked into his fire suit. It's not and baklava. It made... It's a baklava. Yeah, ba- baklava. Sorry. It's a baklava. It's right, baklava. Write down his, his Greek, his his Greek honey flaky right pastry. Down, his which, baklava. If he's okay. eating baklava in the race car, then you just get honey I mean, all over the controls. Right it's a mess. They're very shaky and stuff. Like You can't eat them at all in a race car. Okay, so it, went down, his, that up your it went down his ascot, uh, which was tucked into his fire suit. And it made the perfect funnel, and it filled up his suit full of vomit. Uh, he says, basically, I got out of the car and went straight to the shower and hosed myself while still in the driver's suit down and got rid of all the puke. On top of all of this, he had rental gear on that weekend, oh. LOL. Oh. He has learned his lesson. He says, now I eat light breakfast, usually oatmeal or scrambled eggs, with overcooked bacon i drink a coca-cola <laughs> he read somewhere that it has a chemical that helps with nausea he takes one dramamine oh, the original dramamine. formula not mm. the less drowsy version and now after years of racing he has not had any troubles as long as he follows the simple formula he also added thanks to the podcast you guys are really entertaining to listen to i don't clearly yeah yeah it was food poisoning Yay, yeah. Sam. But th- I, I couldn't even cut this out, so I, I copied and pasted this, and I was going to cut it down. We just had to read it. That's that's how it went. It's awesome. It's Thanks, awesome. Sam, for chiming Thanks, Sam. in. You're awesome. Okay, so uh, we I posted a, a Facebook po- photo to uh, uh, 3 p.m., and then I copied it to E1R, and it was how do you race prep uh, from, feed- from Facebook, and I posted some pictures of my ritual of my drawing a track map which is my to- totally my new thing with my helper and hot shoe the cat <laughs> and we said how do you race prep so I have a couple uh, ideas uh, Soggy was practicing uh, go ahead what Jeff hot shoe would make a great name for a cat Ooh. Just I just say that she's shaky, just really sh- she really just should be uh, you know she's like a race great race cat Chris I think is looking for her um, okay <laughs> So Soggy was practicing uh, cooking bacon for some real racing. I'm with the air quotes, real racing. He was at some uh, real racing that's <laughs> happening at pit race this weekend. Yep. Um, so Michael Kay and I were going back and forth about some pre-cooking meals, uh, packing and then repacking the trailer to make sure that you have um, 
what you need, and then trying to show up early enough to have a pre-race drink. We also had a convo about uh, the list. So I like to make lists out of old mail, like on the back of an old... Good recycling book. tip. Oh, God, I hate that so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I even took pictures of what I do. Uh, like, I, I literally go over and get, take mail out of the the bag. Oh, she, she gets excited when there's, like, a good envelope. <laughs> oh. so Sometimes so I, big, every big time one. I go to clean Vicky's desk, she's like, oh, no, no, don't throw that away. There's a list on there. And there's oh. like 14 lists on coupon. Oh. Uh, so I do this. And then he was like, I do Excel. And I was like, I really like Excel for a lot of things. Don't get me wrong. But pre-race lists on. Nah. Old- yes. It's yeah, you got to be able to carry it around with you in your I pocket do, while you walk back and forth. I do carry it around. Anyway. No, I'm saying, how do you do that on Excel? Oh, oh, right. Oh, okay. yeah. agreeing with you. But no, but he, he, you, yeah. he does do lists on Excel. That's fine. So um, he also mentioned that, uh, oh, actually, we're going to talk about this. Um, I don't even want to give this. Basically, he said what he mentioned when you're going to uh, try to win a class and you try to win and you fail. But when you don't say you're going to win, you do well. So we're going to might talk about that a little bit later. Um, so Eric K from our team uh, said that he reviews a track mat, watches only good YouTube videos. He's very careful about which one he watches of the track and then tries to relax and enjoy you, Eric. Uh, hang on. Chrissy is somehow not coming through. I don't know why. And oh. so no one's coming through now. It's just me. So it's the Chris show for the moment. Chrissy's still talking about stuff, Indeed. so I don't know what she's talking about. Oh. Oh. Uh, yep. oh. oh, Chrissy, yeah, we lost you for a while there. So uh Yeah, we we both oh. lost both of you. Your you guys' internet sucks. No. Yeah. Well, hey. Uh so anyway, talking Eric you are talking about <laughs> Eric and track maps. Like you had a little break and then you started off and then we I didn't hear a word you said. Eric. Actually I heard a word you said because I heard it because you're in the next room. But uh <laughs> no one else did. <laughs> okay, so Eric uh is great. He watches track maps and or he looks track maps, only watches good YouTube videos, relaxes. Yeah, Chrissy, you're gone again. So, anyway, Eric watches track maps and the video and tries to relax and enjoy. Oh. So, Chrissy, for some reason, you're just you're just out of this tonight. Um, Matt Farinchek, hey, he starts working out his liver. That's his prep for the race. So, good for him. <laughs> good plan. Next, we had some feedback from uh, weather feedback from AccuRolling. It's the AccuRolly 3000. He says, Thursday through Sunday, high in the mid-80s. Mid humidity. Storm chances are Thursday night at Saturday a.m. p.m. So that means Saturday. All day. 65%. Yeah. Basically, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. Uh-huh. <laughs> Back in Vietnam, we had all kinds of rain. We had little bitty rain. We had big fat <laughs> globs of rain. We had rain seem to come up from the ground. Mm-hmm. I'd also like to mention Aaron Hoff. He emailed us to share some feedback. He said, great pods, plural. Not so sure it's supposed to be plural. Uh, I guess a great Binges. pod episodes. I don't know. Sorry, well, Aaron. More I'm than like, one episode, binge. so we'll take it. Yeah, I'm totally like correcting your language here. Uh, he enjoys listening to them, even if it's five at a time and on a work weekend or on lawn mowing ses- session. He says, great topic on what it takes to get into the race mindset. No matter how prepared I feel, I am always getting a little anxious before the stint. Usually get my gear on 30 minutes before the stint and then walk around the paddock area with a radio to keep an ear out for emergency pits. And I need to hustle back and jump in. But assuming all goes well, he will pee and refile and refile every five minutes or at least it feels like it. Uh, But time he jumps in, his bladder is empty. He's fully hydrated and he will sweat the entire two hour stint (laughs) and drink half of his camel back. When he gets on the track, he constantly looks around to make sure he's not going to get hit and he takes two laps to get his fears settled and then into the groove. But for those two laps, his anxiety makes him cautious and he has to be aware of where he is. He uh, played competitive hockey all the way through college and transitioned to racing when he was hired with Toyota. So he never had the anxiety when he played like he does when he goes racing. And he was never nervous for big games, uh, but never the level of the race car in the first few laps. So uh, thanks for the awesome topics, he says, and letting us give the feedback. Keep it up. Woo! 
Well, thanks for the feedback, Aaron. We always Seriously, love it. Aaron, thank you. Can, can, I, can I say something real quick here? I want to just mention, Aaron, that I don't think it's a problem to take it easy in the first couple laps. I think if you're it depends on if you're trying to win, yeah. and 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 getting yourself in the group, Chris will say no way. Take two laps. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You're off pace. Get on pace. Oh, that happen. Unless you're trying to win. Uh, hey, and Dave Carpenter, our own uh, 3 p.m. Dave, shared a little bit of neat video history with us. A little New Hampshire Motorsports Park history. The track was originally Briar Motorsports Park. It was sold in 1989 and bulldozed a year later became the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. So oh. he said he understands one corner has remained from the original track in its current configuration. Can you figure out which one? Ooh, so trivia, if you think you know, post up on our Book of Faces, Twatgram, or whatever <laughs> the else you want, or email us, and so be it. <laughs> what is, wait, Jeff. Question. Question. I, 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 I thought I had to control this podcast. Now we're asking trivia questions? No. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I don't know. I okay. lost control. Uh, Let's move on. Wire? Do you not have a, no. a trivia wire? Wire for tri- okay. So uh, we were going to talk about Canadians, uh, and probably they're all too busy being polite. Uh, so th- <laughs> we actually didn't get a whole lot of response, or maybe they just don't want to be identified. But well, they're, too, uh, they're but, too polite to give the feedback that they really want to give. It, it, it's, yeah. right. it's great. You know, you know, I woke up. It's a little dark. I had a nap. I'm still going to send it. Anyway, so uh, uh, Eric Rood got us a got us a quote from the end and said Anthony can't say how it is to race now because the racetracks are close to each other because they've got new laws on sound and only a few major race groups come to race in the Great White North. So I guess most of the time they're just coming down here to race with us. Uh, Chrissy, I know you've got something on this. I do. So actually, Eric Rood told us a little bit more about um, C- Canadians and that was what we were supposed to research and add to here but we didn't so it's cool um okay so but i um got in touch with some of our favorite people sean and kate from silver sleeves racing uh we race with them and they're awesome they just recently won the elusive which is what sean called it the ioe from at the ridge um and that's awesome but they're from bc so they uh come from uh but they also they, could, they usually actually go to a lot of the West Coast lemons races. He said it's tough. Most of the action is both in Montreal, Toronto. Uh, they live on an island, which isolates them even more. So they have their home track, which is uh, outside of Vancouver. And the track is over just a mile, uh, just over a mile and has nine corners. So Sean, Kate and a bunch of their other teammates oh, got, their, got a bunch of license there. And uh, they used to run vintage cars, but they've been doing a lot of lemons as of late. So they uh, typically go to uh, all the tracks in the U.S. They go to the Ridge, Pacific Raceway, Oregon, uh, Motorsports Park, Miller, Button Willow, Portland. Uh, and they race the land, land Crab at Laguna, which was awesome. So Ooh. basically it sounds like they just go. The Great White North is is crap and they come to the U.S. to race. So I think that's what I have assessed uh, our issue in uh, racing in Canada. Go ahead, Chris. And when they do it, they have to take a ferry every time they do that. Yes. Yeah, they live so. on an island. Yeah. Man, Canuckistan is weird. So <laughs> that's, <I> know. <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> all right. You, you know who's not from Canada? <laughs> My mother. I'm right. <laughs> My mom's from here. Hi, Mom. Uh, we oh, listen, is... listen to our podcast in the car on the way to the beach. So it was my, mom, <laughs> my parents and uh, they have some, my dad's trying to help us with our audio and uh, hi mom and dad. Cause both of them listen. You know so, how we know she's from Philly. She says water. Well, That's I right. say water. So there's that. <laughs> or slickery or a while. No, no a no, while's Berks no. County. She doesn't say that. No, no that's, yeah. it's, it's slippy. That's slippy. Sorry, slip. Yep. All right. Yes. All right. So let's move Keep on making to fun the of main accent. topic. And this is going to be a quick main topic because hey, we're Very already forty-eight minutes in. Forty-eight. <laughs> well, we will blow through it and try and get you done by a little bit over an hour here. So here's the idea: we're trying to win. I don't know if anybody heard that. <laughs> Not but this It's going to rain. Yeah. So who knows? So it's here's the deal. We're going to talk tonight about how to get serious and highlight some of the stories that have caused our own downfall. We're going to talk about maybe stepping on our wiener a little. But uh, what if you try and win? Let's hear, let's hear from everybody. What, what have we done differently? What are some of the best things and the worst things that happened when you try and get serious at a lemons race? Pointy end of the field is not a good place to be. Not a, I shouldn't say a hospitable place to be. Who wants to start it off? 
Jeff, actually, you should start it off. I, I, I should start it off? I, yeah. I have more of the funny stories. I'm hoping somebody who had some well, let's, let's let Chrissy start it off, and then I'll go. Okay. And it can be funny, and Mental wants to be last. So Okay. Okay, so, Mental can be last. So I, uh, I, have, I really feel like when we talk about this topic, there is much less pressure when you aren't trying to win. Oh, so that's for sure. Well, yes, and it's a different uh, mindset, and it's a different uh, feeling when you're in uh, that team, when, it, you, when the team of you are going to get in the car. Even if you're doing everything quickly, you're trying to do pit stop quickly, I feel like you are just um, – you're just trying to be out there to race. And it, if you miss a corner, if you don't do something as well, you're just not as pressured. So I have to think of when we race with Hamza, we, I, we do well and we don't always like, we're not as stressed. Like a barber, um, maybe, for example. Yeah. But barber, but also NCM. So I feel like it is a consistent racing with Hamza. Hamza has a, so Hamza uh, is a fantastic friend of ours and uh, he preps a really great car. It's a E325. E30, E36. E36. Okay, E36. Um, <coughs> so, Cheater. Oh, boring. No, it, it's a great setup car. but it, a lot, it, it is boring, but it's a great car that's set up car. well. Doesn't have a whole lot of, um, you know, it's pretty stockish, I think Chris said, it's a, but it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a great yeah. car. Uh, but he, it's, his, it's, it's solid it's, it's it's an anvil yeah but part of it is his no don't no don't boring it um is black with white numbers so there's that it was very far away so anyway um but it's it's actually Hamza's mentality of we don't care we're gonna race we're gonna have a good time we're gonna do we're gonna do our stints we do them as long as we can we're gonna pit when we need to but you do as well as you can and he doesn't care about the numbers and we care about the numbers more than he does and I think so, he said that to us in July he was like oh, oh, oh slow down we ain't trying to win this thing right. <laughs> and and that is actually truly his mentality. And when I ran on Barber, I was running in second. We didn't win. We came in eighth, or we came in seventh. And then there was the other one where we ran in NCM, which was the the three of us. So it was Mental, Chris, and I, and Hamza. And we came in eighth um, on Saturday. Well, we, and then yeah, we were Chris, eighth oh, until Chris, I drove Chris the wheels off the, the car. <laughs> so that's the kind of thing that we literally uh, drove the wheels off. Truly, the car. yes. So I feel like there are times where I feel like we we didn't try and we did a great job and we la and especially when the four of us, five of us together and Hamza, um, but we we laughed so much we were just low key. We had a great time when we were at uh, Barbara this this year. So I just feel like um, those are the things I love. Um, I have to say that, uh, and this is a, a marital issue, um, racing with Chris to trying to win is stressful. So, uh, you know, of course, when he and I, and it's, it's great that you guys can't see me because I turned my video off. Um, so uh, we, I live with him, so there's that. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> so there's plenty of times where we just said, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we talk about, oh, racing's coming. Uh, we got to talk about that. We got to work on that. So um, fortunately, Jeff and I have really been trying to work on our driving and stepping it up. And then, you know, Friday, we're going to do testing day and it's going to be great. But uh, there is some stress, added stress, because when you're trying to win with a car, especially when we have a car that's prepped, uh, that Chris has done a really great job to prep it, um, there is additional stress. So I have to say it's a, uh, I, I, and I, I'll, the last thing I'll say is that I do have nightmares when I am uh, trying to win, when we're trying to win races. I uh, actually, actually have nightmares that I'm not doing well enough or I am uh, messing up. So I have added stress when we try to win. That's my deal. Hey, this Jeff, weekend, Jeff, all, all I, I'll go before Jeff because he's still riding. This weekend, okay. really, as long Jeff, as none of y'all crash the car, I'll be happy. Really, <laughs> don't crash the car at all. All right, that's the only stress you have. Uh, I, I mean, I agree a lot with Chrissy. The best fun you have is when you don't really care, but you're still trying to do well, and you have a car that's pretty well prepared. If you aren't even trying, now it's getting boring. Like, just go do an HPD. It's a lot cheaper and easier. But you know, go out, give it a good, like a good college try, and but you know, don't kill yourself over it. When we're really trying to win, and we're in like when we were in you know, pointy end, 
really, like, and especially in the top five, now's the time we're stressing over every lap and every second and every lap. And like, well, what, why were you off five seconds that lap? What's going on? Could, what's, could you make that pass? Like, why are you, you know, backing off? You, you, you've got to go for everything, like doing a pit stop. Well, why couldn't you, why were you fumbling in the belts? We've got to get this right. But when you're giving it a good try and you're, you're still not really, you don't really care, you're just going to have a much, much better time, if, especially if you have a car that's well-prepared it's not frustrating you. If you can run all weekend, give it a good shot, but not be worried, you're, you're, you're going to have a good time. If not, you're going to have a bad time, okay? No good. Mm-hmm. No good. Okay. okay. And that's it. Don't kill yourself. Find out what your goals are for the weekend. And if your goal for the weekend really is, w- let's go for it. And everyone agrees, let's go for it. Okay then do it and be committed to it and, and go for it. But if that's not your goal that weekend, then you know, just, just back off that, that 5% that you need to this, in your head and you'll have a better time. Jeff is typing every failure of the team as we're talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, I'm or not going to read them all. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, now it's time, Jeff, to, to start with your, yeah, with yeah. your butcher <laughs> yeah. bill here that you've got. So, so I just wanted to say that, we have a history of trying to win, even though we've only recently tried to win overall. We tried for a very long time to win Class C in several different cars. Uh, the boat, most notably, was many races, many races trying to win this win Class C. And Cr- Chrissy hit the nail on the head. When you're not paying attention, all of a sudden you end up like leading a class or doing really well. And it, it, sometimes it catches you off guard because you're just not thinking about it. But the difference between being there and being number one is is very different. And everything has to go right, including what I'm going to talk about is sometimes you step on your own wiener and you cause the failure that is going to knock yourself out. Um, so the boat took us many races to win C, and I'm going to highlight two of the times where we stepped on our own wiener um, one time. We were uh, at the wonderful capital offense in in everyone, you know, bow your head to the event that was the Lemon <laughs> Race. Yo. Summit Be point. Tech, yo. At Summit no. Point. Sem- Summit Point. It was hot. There was no race until like noon on day two, and it would be like Caligula at night. (laughs) So we had the boat, and we were doing really well, and we were trying for a Class C win, and I think we were winning Class C with a blown clutch. We had one speed. We were in fourth all the way around the track. How many turns at Summit Point? 22. Shenandoah, 22. 22 turns in freaking fourth gear with a truck transmission and we were still fending off number two and we went out and we bought the part and chris looked at me and said dude we don't race until noon let's fix that thing tomorrow and what happened we had a catastrophe during repairing we broke the pedal (laughs) we had the wrong parts and we ended up missing the green flag and losing that race because we didn't take it. I don't know if we took it. Didn't take it seriously. We didn't do everything in our power. So yeah, we screwed that up. We gave it away. Luckily, we gave it to Dave Morrow, who we love. So good for him. Sure. Um, we we were also uh, trying to win Class C once, and I was in the Triumph, and my brother was in the boat, and we were, gosh. 16th and 17th, 17th and 18th. And we were on the same shift together. And I was doing everything in my power to pass my brother because the triumph was just faster that weekend than the boat. It had rained and we had done a great job. We were fighting each other and he got hit by an MR2. It cut a tire. It totally was not his fault, but it put them out of the race for the C-Class win. Uh, you know, sometimes it's your fault. Sometimes it's other people's fault. You know, uh, for a long time, my signature in the lemons world was it's it's rarer to be beaten by a Fiero that doesn't break <laughs> than to beat a Fiero that does. And the world's worst Fiero one time had us by like five laps. Yeah. And we literally sat back and said, let them step on their wiener. It's going to break. It's going to break. It's going to break. It didn't. It didn't and break. And it didn't break. I remember that race. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was a great race. And, and you know, we've had over aggro drivers crash. We've had um, clutch cables break. I mean, you can do every single thing in your power right. You can be perfect and be in a car that's fast enough and still not win because the thing's out of your control or other people are just slightly better. And that's what happened last year, Thompson. We're not going to discuss it because we're running out of pod. But I'm just going to end with a perfect race only buys you a lottery ticket. And the top 10 is 100 times easier than number one. Mm-hmm. And that's All every true. class. All true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There right. it is. End of rant. <clears throat> so uh, I'm, I'm going to talk as quickly as possible. We are going to run a little yeah. over, folks. Appreciate you sticking with us. We're doing we have a, Just we have a, let it run. We have a brilliant new segment that I'm actually excited about. So and I've, <laughs> I've alluded to this before, but now the four of us have had this discussion intimately. Um, last year, particularly, and actually it, it started the year before, I, I got addicted to winning, not to racing. And in the course of that, I lost my way. And when I showed up at a race weekend, it was about winning. It wasn't about racing. Now, I understand where Chrissy's coming from. It makes total sense. There's a lot of additional pressure on you. And when I show up at the track, I'm going to give it my best. And it depends on the team that I'm running with. When I run with road and track and friends, I'm usually the slowest guy. When I run with, you know. Ah, with the- us too. Ah. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> not no. not really. I'm only messing with you. I'm only I know, I know. No, and, and, and I'm rarely the fastest guy. And what it normally happens is I'll set the fast lap, and then Chris will go knock a half a second off of it. And, and, and that to digress. I was I was lost in why I do this hobby, and the cars breaking, and it wasn't three pedal mafia. It was everybody, every team I raced with. The cars just kept breaking, and I was coming home in worse and worse moods, and I was why I was doing this and I was seriously considering taking up another hobby and it kind of hit me at New Orleans or uh, at, at Bowling Green last year but it took a couple days for it to set in but I, I had forgotten why I do this now it is my nature as an A-type personality that I'm going to give everything my best and I hate losing a race in the pits that drives me nuts but if you're on the track and you're giving it your level best and you just get beat by a faster car well then that's cool so Keep the mentality, keep the mentality of giving it everything you've got. Change your metric. Your metric cannot be your spot in the finishing because there's so much of that is out of your control. Your metric, you know this when you get in the RV, when you get in the car to drive home, did you give it your all? Do you have that genuine soul satisfying feeling of exhaustion that you know you gave it everything you got? And if you gave it everything you got and you still finished eighth because the tire fell off the car or you finished whatever because the brake line broke or whatever, that's still a great big grin on your face that lasts until Wednesday morning after the race. And if I ever get into a situation where it is more stressful for me to be at the race than it was for me to be in a crew aircraft combat, I know that I'm missing the point. And I've I and I, I still fall into this trap. I'm not completely cured of this, but I always have to recage my instruments. And cars are gonna break. Endurance racing will break your heart. These cars will find weaknesses that you did not know they had. And you comes down to did you give it your level best? Did you stay up till two in the morning swapping out the part of that car? Uh, I remember the one time when we were working at New Jersey and the boat had blown up and sorry for party and racing blown up. And we were 1130 at night swapping the motor, some cheapo piece of crap junkyard shall not be named because they sold us a bad motor. And all of a sudden I hear and I sorry, fought them yeah, and I hear sorry for party racing's engine fire up. And I was so demoralized. And I said, that car was built by naked drunk people. Literally. That's not an exaggeration. <laughs> Half and naked. Chris, Chris looked at me and said, don't worry, it's just wait till tomorrow. And sure enough, that thing came out on the hook, and I felt a lot better. And I well, should travel both, other people's Both engines fortune. were bad anyway, so that's yeah. a really good example. Because they bought their engine for the same rip-off yeah. artist yes, we did. they did, yes. But mm-hmm. every race I've done this year, and I've refocused my efforts, I bought the tank cat just so I could get back on track. And I have not driven away from a track this year and not been giggling about something. And that was always my goal. I've got a, my good friend, David Shaw, stayed at his house when I go down to New Orleans and I work down there. He's had a race car that he's been building now 
for three years. He has spent a fortune on this car, and it still overheats, A, because it's New Orleans. And he's just annoyed. And so this weekend, he took his daughter's Boxster out. He's like, oh, my God, this was so much fun. And I'm like, David, just buy a car that works, man. Stop Stop focusing on trying to run at the pointy end of this thing and focus on giving it your absolute best because that's what's going to make it fun. You look at like Bill Keen and his whole family. They're not measuring their success by the podium. They're measuring their success by how well they did as a family and as a team. And he's got it figured out. He's right. So keep the right attitude. Keep the I'm giving it everything I got attitude. Change the metric of your success. That's my last point. Oh, if you had a mic drop, you can't, you, can't, you can't mic drop that mic. Yeah, it's in a stand. It's kind of hard to drop it. Yeah, you just – Fair I, enough. I, All right. I, I really want to, like, tip my hat, so to speak, to mental because it, yeah. it's tough to talk about how you lost your way. And and not that I think we're we, losing oh, our we – were, We were there when he yeah. lost his way. No, no, Chris, yeah, no, Chris and Chrissy yeah. saw it firsthand. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. Off. I, I just I, I went and took a chair and I physically sat a chair someplace else because I don't want to talk to anybody. You I like, did the same. What's well, right? Like, you pouted. You pouted. That's okay. Oh, it, it was it was worse than a pout. He came it around. Oh. And now I think yeah. is ready to sign up for his newsletter. So yeah, no, that's <laughs> right. I, was, I, I, I'm ready to shave my head and start following the man. Uh, no, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Any cult involving me is going to involve great hair, not and shaved hair. And it's I'm tequila, out. too. No cool <laughs> Only tequila. All of this. All this but, no, all right. I, I, I was going to take up competitive shooting. But, you know, we, we dude, we're, we're just having too much damn fun doing this. Damn right. Yeah. Bar- Barbara, God, I have gone to CrossFit classes where my core did not hurt as much as driving right. back from Barbara. That was such Agreed. a great weekend. Yeah. And I don't even remember where I placed. I, I don't. I don't remember where we I had played. a good time at Barber. Oh, it wasn't good. It's because he had too much bread heels and grease that weekend. <laughs> that Hell fun. yeah. I'm having that this weekend. Right, and liquor ball sandwiches. Let's All move right. on. So, we hey, have a new for, segment. A new Michael. segment. This is a, this is a, you know, as rotating the rotation occasionally with uh, just the tip and Hello Sweet But Terrible. It's called On the Spot. It's a quick surprise question that one of us has. Everyone then gets to give a one word answer. And that's it. We don't know what the question is. He, nope, we have I'm, no idea what the question is. I'm, I'm so excited. I didn't even know we had a new you know, segment. And until we're, not, <laughs> we're not even going to talk about it afterwards. This is just it. It's going to be a quick okay. flash. We're done. It's on the spot. Oh. The question this week oh. is, what's your favorite shift to drive? Chrissy, go. Uh, first at Thompson or uh, be only word, 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 done. Word. done. Uh, third on Saturday. Mental. That's graveyard. Which yeah. day? Um, middle. Anywhere in the middle. Okay. Graveyard's Checker. a tr- twenty-four hours. Chris, what's yours? Checker. Graveyard in twenty-four hours happens like at no, never. Doesn't matter. No, the graveyard shift on a twenty-four hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Chris, are you saying graveyard or are you saying checker? I'm saying checker. Checker. Because you okay. built the car, of course. What was Jeff? Oh. Jeff, then. Jeff was middle. middle. Jeff, Jeff middle. was middle. 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 That yeah. doesn't say much. Tired of opening. Fine. <laughs> All right. That's it. All right. Without that any was music. Fun. Because I don't have any of my no, no, iPads sorry, tonight. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a terrible human being. If you're doing don't the don't music, you got to read the closing, too. Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, just, yeah, continue to talk about cool stuff real quick, guys. Yeah. Yay. All just, right. Yeah, well, yeah, gets his battery low. well, next week, uh, next week, we're probably going to talk about what happened at Thompson, because that's oh, what yay. we're going to be focusing on there is the events of the <laughs> Thompson and, uh, race. Are we going to have the guest interview next week? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right now, we are planning on having senior, we'll uh, the, the general events manager, former chief instructor for Extreme Experience, Cal Denisi, is going to be on. And we're going to talk about your career progression as an instructor because you can make money doing that. But in the meantime, folks, thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's special edition of Everyone's Racers because they're all special. We hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hit the subscribe button on iTunes. We're on Google Play, but we're not really on Google Play. I'm working on it. Or wherever you get your podcast. If you have any questions, want to give us some show ideas, or drop us a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers. Or like our race team Facebook page, the Three Pedal Mafia Lemons Race Team. If you'd rather not venture into the void, that's the book of faces so they can steal your more of your information and really just mask everything you post up there as shrouded racism. 
Just email us at everyone.racers at gmail or find us on Instagram and Twitter at everyone racers. Thanks again, folks. Have a great week. <laughs>